Hello and welcome to our final day this week in Acts chapter 27. Uh, so today we're going to look at verses 39 through 44. And finally, the boat breaks apart. We've come to the end of our boat. Um, we've known it was coming. We've heard the Jaws music, dun, 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 dun. And now it's going to happen. Although yesterday was a good day. They had food yesterday. Uh, Paul has received assurances from an angel of the Lord uh, that, in fact, they're going to all survive, even though the boat is going to be lost. I hope they know how to swim. Uh, but God's going to save them, whether they've had swimming lessons or not. I suppose there's a lesson there. If it's the Lord's will for you to be saved, you're going to be saved whether you can fly out of the airplane or not. Okay, verse 39. And when, and when day came to be, so this is a temporal uh, clause, uh, they were not recognizing the land. Uh, this is Malta, but they don't, they don't, what, now what is that over there? Um, and uh, this is the imperfect of epigonosco uh, to recognize, uh, to uh, recognize, it has a epsilon augment right there. They were not recognizing the land, but um, they, they were noticing, another imperfect, see the augment there, catanoeo, they were noticing a certain beach having, I'm sorry, a certain bay having a beach, which is nice, uh, because unto which they were planning, if it were possible, uh, to ram the boat aground, to go out up on. Uh, so uh, they have a plan. There's a beach. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ram this puppy up that beach. Okay. Uh, relative clause there, whom they were wanting, imperfect again, a lot of imperfects here, um, basically bu buluo, uh, to whip, to plan with an augment, imperfect. If they would, notice the I, this is the uh, optative, so this is a fourth class condition, uh, if they would be able uh, to, to go, to, to, uh, to ground the boat, um, I'm not quite, see, what is this? X, X O O O, uh, something like that. X O T E O is what this is to run aground. X O T E O, and this must be a, an irregular eris because the theta is missing. I can see that it's eris from the sigma alpha, uh, but it's X O T E O. So where did the theta go? Well, when letters dis disappear, you know you're not in the present. Uh, you know you're not in the present tense. And so, uh, they if it were possible to run aground the boat, verse forty. And having cut away the anchors, uh, so this is what peri ireo, yes, uh, that L is a kind of a sign of, of the aorist of ireo. So having cut away the anchors, uh, allowing them into the sea, this is eao, uh, which is a participle. Uh, this is the, actually this is imperfect. Uh, my, my handy dandy Bible is telling me. So this is an imperfect active indicative third plural. They, they were allowing uh, the anchors into the sea, having cut them away. Okay, we're getting ready to move here. We've been trying to stay still, but now we have cut anchor um, at the same time, uh, having uh, untied on emi, having untied, that's aorist of on emi, because there's no iota from emi, uh, having untied the, the ropes of the rudders. So apparently they had ropes tied to the rudders. Uh, to keep, you know, to be able to manipulate them. But they're going to let the rudders uh, rud, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, of the pedals. <laughs> Pedalia, pa, pedalion uh, of the pedals. They must have done that. I'm, I'm, I wonder if they did this with pedals, uh, you know, to kind of rudder right, rudder left with pedals. Uh, I may investigate this and talk about that in tomorrow's patron video on sailing in the Roman world. Okay. and. Um, uh, having uh, hoisted the mainsail, uh, having uh, kind of lifted, epireo, I think. This is eris because uh, of the alpha there. It's a liquid verb, er, so it doesn't do a sigma. doesn't have a sigma alpha, but it is an eris active participle. Uh, having hoisted the front sail, the artemone, to the blowing. Um, so apparently it was blowing, but they didn't want to blow. They wanted to... Uh, find a direction. <laughs> they didn't want to blow randomly. Uh, they were headed for the beach. Uh, this is the imperfect of kata echo. 
this is a lot of vocabulary that's not very frequent in the New Testament, let me say. So it's been a bit of a, a bit of a vocab adventure in sailing this chapter. Uh, verse 41. And having fallen upon a place between the seas, a between the sea place, in other words, a sandbar, something that's not supposed to be there, really. This is water. Why do we have sand this close to a boat in the middle of the, Aege the uh, uh, Adriatic Sea or, or the Mediterranean Sea south of Italy? So, they, having fallen upon a land bar, land sandbar, uh, this is uh, at Peripipto, you know Peri, uh, and his, the aorist of Peripipto is uh, peri, uh, Peripison in the indicative, but this is a participle, so there's no augment. Having fallen upon a sandbar, uh, they, um, uh, they, ran, the, they rammed the boat into the sandbar. So this is Epikello, uh, I believe, Epikello, yes, Epikello. They ran aground the ship. Um, this is the aorist of Epikello. Um, it follows the format with double lambda words. Uh, double lambda words don't do sigmas, so we only have the alpha of the aorist. We don't have a sigma alpha. Double lambda words lose one of the lambdas outside the present stem, and so we've lost one of the lambdas. And then in the aorist, they do internal lengthening. The epsilon goes to an A, epsilon iota, which is what happens here, and there's the augment. So this is perfectly Right, this is perfectly regular, although perfectly annoying, uh, but it's a liquid verb in the aorist. Uh, they ran the ship. Uh, and the, the prora, the, the uh, prow, as it were, the front of the ship on the one hand, um, having uh, uh, become stuck fast, this is uh, eredo, the aorist of eredo, it's a participle, active females carry uzis and are sassy. I'm um, sorry for the mnemonic, but Sasa. Sasa tells me, I know Sasa. Sasa is feminine, a feminine participle, and it's aorist because of the sigma alpha. So this is an aorist active participle, a nominative feminine singular from uh, erido, erido, sorry. Um, so having stuck fast, it remained unmovable. Uh, here's another liquid verb in the aorist. Um, epsilon nu, I've kind of, Memorize that as a very common past tense ending, third person singular. It is aorist in this case. It doesn't have the sigma because mm, n is nu is a liquid verb. It does have internal lengthening here. It remained unmovable. Now I can't see the text here because my bar is in the way. But I think what it says is, at, but the the stern, uh, the backside of the boat, uh, was destroyed by the force. Not, not the Star Wars force, but the force of the waves. In fact, a number of manuscripts have uh, tone cum, cumanon or something like that here for waves. Uh, some very old, some, uh, old manuscripts, in fact. Let's see, uh, P74. I don't remember how old Papyrus 74 is, but the papyri in general tend to be older manuscripts um, rather than new ones. Um, and so... Uh, I can look it up real quick. Why not? Because I can pause the tape, and I will. Okay, P74 is uh, estimated as 7th century. That's the 600s. So it's not too old. I mean, it's, it's a fairly old manuscript, but it's not old, old. Uh, and so I understand why uh, the editors of the, this is the uh, Society of Biblical Literature, Greek New Testament that I've, I've used uh, for, for these Acts videos. And... I understand why they haven't gone with that extra reading because the older manuscripts tend not to have the force of the waves. They have force, but they don't have of the waves. I understand the older videos don't have that. Um, and also uh, there's a rule, choose the shorter reading. It's not a very uh, consistent rule. I mean, we can't depend on it uh, for sure, but um, it's, it's the idea that manuscripts tended to add thing to add things more than to take things away. Um, and so if that's true, uh, then I, I agree with the decision. They gave it a, a C. They, they rate their, their uh, choices and they gave it a C. So they're not, they're not really confident that of the waves wasn't here, uh, but that's what the committee that put together the edited Greek New Testament decided. 
Um, and so it's not here of the waves, but that's what, that's what it is, right? It's nothing wrong with that translation. That's, that's what's doing it, right? The waves are doing it. By the way, a lot of Greeks, I've done videos, a lot of videos, as you know, uh, and I've done Greek videos, and a lot of Greeks uh, get annoyed when I say that the word luo can mean destroy. Uh, and that's because they know modern Greek. Modern Greeks are, uh, I shouldn't stereotype, I have experienced a lot of modern Greeks who get very annoyed with me. But what they don't know is they're getting annoyed with New Testament Greek. Just because you know modern Greek doesn't mean you know anything about ancient Greek at all. I mean, obviously, it's going to be easier for you to learn ancient Greek if you know modern Greek. But anyway, here's an example where luo clearly means destroyed. Uh, it was destroyed by the force. That's what this says here. It was broken apart. And so take that. You modern Greeks are always getting on me for saying that luo can mean destroyed. In the New Testament, it can. Deal with it. Okay, moving right along. So, verse 42. Now, the plan of the soldiers came to be that they would kill uh, this, the prisoners. Um, this is kind of, kind of a, a, sometimes henna seems to degenerate in Koine Greek to almost a noun clause. The plan was that they would kill the, the, the soldiers. Although, you, I can put the word would in there, um, and you can get a subjunct, there is a subjunctive, idea there. So it's not exactly a noun clause. Um, but Hina says, subjunctive is coming. Subjunctive is coming. And sure enough, apoctanosin is subjunctive. That long vowel before the ending is my clue that I'm looking at a subjunctive. Apoctano, it's the present stem. So this is a present active subjunctive, third plural, uh, that they might kill. Again, a hopefully is old foot by now. Uh, it means uh, it's an aorist of genomai, its deponent, uh, it came to pass, something like that. A plan came about, something like that. Lest, now Luke has done this a lot in the last few chapters. He's used may uh, to uh, mean something like lest, and it's had a subjunctive, lest someone should escape, having swum away, having swam away. Um, I think there's an implied on may here. If not, uh, uh, someone, if uh, lest, if, uh, no, uh, an implied henna, in order that not, someone might flee. So there's, a, there's kind of, I think, when, when may means lest, it's like there's a, a, a hidden um, henna that's missing. So this is uh, uh, the aorist subjunctive, uh, third person singular of dia fugo, uh, I know it's Harris because there's a missing epsilon in Fugo. Um, this is a sigma alpha, so it's Arist. It's an Arist active participle uh, to swim out, uh, lest someone should swim out, lest someone having swum out, swam out, uh, would would escape. Have swum. It is have swum, isn't it? Swim, swam, have swum. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, verse forty-three. Uh, but the centurion wanting to rescue Paul, wanting to save Paul. He hindered them from their intention. Uh, this is Sigma, Sigma Epsilon Nu, Arist active indicative third singular from Koluo. Um, uh, Koluo, I believe it is. Keluo, sorry. That's interesting. Keluo, uh, Kel Keluo the Epsilon in Keluo becomes Ko in the Arist. I'd never quite... I've subconsciously known that, but I haven't consciously figured that out. Sigma Alpha Iota is a aorist infinitive, dia sozo, to rescue, to save thoroughly, um, something, a present participle here, uh, its deponent, bulomai. Okay, uh, and he, or, or wait a minute, these are two different words. Okay, I completely forget what I just said. This is keluo, this is uh, koluo to mean prevent. So he prevented them and this is he commanded them. Sorry, I had a confusion there. I was just testing you. Um, I, you knew it, right? You knew that I would, I'd messed up. I was just testing you. Okay, so he prevented them from the plan and he commanded the ones being able uh, to swim, having jumped overboard first uh, into the land to go, okay? 
So uh, those being able, it's a participle, men are passive or middle participles. This is dunamai, amai, it's deponent. Uh, so even though it's middle or passive in form, we're gonna translate it actively, the ones being able. Um, Ken's rule, if the participle has the article, use who or that, the ones who being able, um, we, then we bring it on down with common sense, the ones who were able, uh, he commanded those who, those who were able uh, to swim. This is uh, kolum uh, bao, and so this is the infinitive of kolum bao, uh, to swim, to be swimming, present infinitive. Uh, having jumped overboard, a psi is the key to a hidden sigma, so we have a hidden sigma alpha, aorist. My aunt is an active participle, aorist active participle, uh, from op orizo, something like that. No, it's uh, aporipto, sorry. Apo, aporipto, okay. So having jumped overboard uh, first, uh, to, so to the ones being able all first, having jumped overboard into land to go. I'm the first, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with the word first there. Let me see if I can uh, get some insight. Okay, I think I've got it. Um, so the idea is if you can swim, jump overboard and swim to shore. Okay, that first. First, those, he, he ordered first those who were able to swim to jump overboard and to go to land. Present, this is present, I can see the iota there. X I M E, because the iota is there, this is the present stem. Present active infinitive, to go to the land. And the rest, so we have the first and then we have the rest. And as for the rest, um, some, upon planks and others upon something from the boat. Okay, so those who can swim are swimming and those who can't hold on to boards or you know the toilet. Uh, they probably didn't have a toilet. Okay, um, so, um, so he ordered those who can swim first uh, to jump overboard and go to the land and then those who, uh, the rest, uh, those who could, uh, on the one hand, up some upon this who's who's is kind of a some, the others, a kind of correlative thing. Those whom uh, are on planks and those who are in something else or the boat. Doesn't tell us which one Paul fits into. Interesting. Uh, now, uh, maybe after a couple uh, shipwrecks, Paul's learned to swim if he didn't before. Uh, but we don't know. Can Paul swim? I don't know. What do you think? Um, and thus, and this is the end of the chapter, and thus it came to be all to be rescued upon the land. Yay! So everybody makes it to the shore of Malta, um, and nobody's lost their life, but the ship is gone, and the cargo is gone, which is, of course, what Paul predicted. Uh, it came to pass again, Arist, Genita, Genita, Arist active, or no, it's not active, Arist deponent, indicative, third singular from Gin, oh my. Um, theta, eta, Arist passive, uh, and this is an infinitive, to be saved upon the land. Well, we did it. We've finished Acts chapter 27. So Lord willing, next week we will read the last chapter of Acts. Then we're moving on to Isaiah. Isaiah 40 through 66 is what I intend to start week after next. Just in time for Christmas, come for ye. And then uh, tomorrow, hopefully I'll do a little, little um, uh, patron video on um, matters of sailing as far as I can uh, uh, do in a short time of research. So this has been Acts chapter 27.